Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev, where today we're continuing work on our Phasmophobia Cross Minute Mashup. Now, last time we focused on the basics, this meant recreating aspects of Phasmophobia, but in the one bit monochrome world of Minute. This included basic controls, an inventory system, and darkness. Good old spooky darkness. It was a solid first step in the mashup process, and mashing will continue to do with today's plan. Today we are continuing to focus on recreating Phasmophobia's items to the best of my ability, because again, I've yet to play the game for myself, so we'll base behavior on observation and light research. Specifically, we'll be focusing on how tools interact with hotspots and the ghost itself. We'll also start working on the ghost behavior and how it interacts with our randomly generated worlds. Sounds like a plan, so let's not waste any more time and get to the coding. First up was marking the ghost's spawn point. This will provide us with a hotspot for the player to uncover. And next up was tool behavior. It seems like most detection items in Phasmophobia are proximity based, so that's what I've gone with for our mashup. The math took some working out, but a percentage based proximity check was created for our tools to use. Which may be hard to see here, but trust me, it's working just as we needed it to. So with detection for both hotspots and ghosts ready to go, we had to make the ghost mobile. For now, I simply used the same basic wander system that we've used multiple times before, and I couldn't find much information on how the ghosts work on a technical level, so I'm operating under the assumption that ghosts simply wander randomly unless in hunt mode. And then for testing purposes, I drew the hotspot and destination points for our ghost to the screen. The test showed that the wandering code was working just fine. However, the ghosts in Phasmophobia seem to have some rules to their pathing. Not only do they apparently not pass through walls, but they seem to also adhere to some basic pathing behavior as if they were solid entities. So I added our own pathing grid and pathing checks to the ghost code. Again, code used here was the same featured in many previous projects. This included marking all wall objects as instances to avoid, doors excluded. But in order for ghosts to move through doorways like they seem to in Phasmophobia, and as a way to mess with the player, ghosts would open slash close any nearby doors that they pass. Testing showed that this wasn't working. I'm also embarrassed to admit that I wasted a lot of time waiting to watch the ghost walk through doorways, all to confirm that this wasn't working, instead of, you know, having the camera just follow the ghost and force the interaction. Anyway, back to the code, I increased the distance check for doors and turned the ghost red when the event would trigger. The change in distance was the key, and so now ghosts could open doors. Now we just needed them to be able to close them. Back in the code, a random chance was added that the ghost would close an open door as it passed through it. This ended up working, however, this would also instantly trigger the ghost to reopen the same door. So a door timer was added to delay a ghost long enough to prevent this from happening. This meant no longer would ghosts go crazy with doors, although that would make for a great scare. Anyway, because the ghost could now control doors, this meant that on occasion, it could decide to leave the play area. So back in the code, I tried simply preventing the ghost's Y position from surpassing the most north room on the level, since this would be the only way to actually exit the location. It seemed to make the most sense, however, it ended up breaking the pathing code by either stalling the ghost's movement indefinitely or rubber banding the ghost's position. So after attempting and failing many different ways to limit the ghost's positioning, I had one last idea. During the level generation, I'd have the opening to the location sealed off in the pathing grid. And as you can see here, the red are the areas to avoid on the pathing grid. The red covering the only exit to the location means that while the player is able to move freely in and out of the location, the ghost cannot. And thus, even if the ghost decides to move a little bit too far outside the location's parameters, it's still effectively trapped within the walls of the location itself. And that was all the time I had for this session. Unfortunately, I spent a lot of time on the ghost pathing, and it still needs some tweaking. However, progress is progress, and the Phasmophobia Cross Minute mashup continues on strong. And with the majority of the mechanics slowly coming together, we'll soon start focusing on the more uh, creative approaches to the gameplay. But for now, that brings us to the end of today's episode of Let's Dev. So leave a like if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already, and leave your thoughts on our progress in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.